Yeah. So we pick up uh, in New York, uh, March 15, 2019, at which point from here on, who knows, time tracking will be weird. But today we're recording this. So it works. The sky is blue. The sun is out. And there's not a cloud in the sky. Uh, winter feels like it's releasing its grasp on New York, at least a little bit. Uh, the streets still team with people bundled up against the cold, but the sun seems warmer today. Uh, moving through the crowd, stepping up from the subway entrance is a pale young woman clad in black, uh, getting her bearings and locating the uh, red brick building she was looking for. A few blocks away, an older redheaded woman uh, looking a little bit out of sorts and travel worn steps out from a cab. Her foot immediately pinning down a $20 bill that's fluttering through. She pays the cabbie with it and insists he keeps the change. Uh, the camera slides through back to that first red brick building up to the penthouse level as a middle-aged man steps from the elevator dressed in a tailored gray suit, eyes darting to security cameras and alternate exits. The occultists anonymous have arrived in New York City. And so we fast forward just a touch, uh, as our players, our characters, uh, all kind of arrive in a penthouse uh, apartment. Um, I can't remember what floor it's on, but the top floor is a penthouse after all, of Songbird's uh, penthouse, where you guys have a chance to kind of meet and introduce each other. And you guys have all received messages. You kind of knew who everybody was. At least you have a, um, you have a picture to go with everybody's names we haven't really had a chance to meet or talk or anything like that so songbird it's your place how do you how are you setting this up how how are you hosting everybody what time of day is it um we'll say like later afternoon yeah two so maybe uh, three so i think i put out just like some uh a little bit of snacks and stuff like that uh yeah be a good host sure come all like dressed up in red and because i mean songbird is basically a power ranger at this point like his entire wardrobe is just very red themed okay uh i think i've definitely been like kind of worried about this all day like the cool calm like exterior is definitely like huh these people are gonna come live with me or something i don't know either way i'm sure it'll be fine uh so yeah like obsessive cleaning and like trying to be like a good host and stuff like that. Cool. Some some non super loud metal music is kind of playing for once. Your, your speaker is asking you, "Hey, are you sure you want are to show sure? this under 11? <laughs> uh, cool. So we'll uh, we'll fast forward some of the the awkward meet and greet where you guys kind of shake hands and kind of look at each other and not not a hundred percent sure. You know, hey, we all know magic, but we all are literally from different paths. So we uh, we uh, approach magic in very different ways than each other. So it is kind of a little bit awkward. You can't quite speak on the same level. I think some of you have shared um, Arcana, like Songbird and Mammon might talk a little bit about Prime and Mind. They both have that, that kind of shared space, but, and Death, wow, you all have a little bit shared between everybody, I think. Death and death. I have death with him and or death with her and life with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, a little little bit shared here and there. Um, but you guys are kind of sitting, kind of listening to music, probably in that big great room that you have uh on the one side of your your apartment. And uh I mean it's it's probably like you're you're probably talking through like, okay, who's actually staying the songbird, which I believe right now is just uh Tronis and uh Weird. Because I think Mammon has his own place, right? Right. Okay. Because uh, as far as I know, I'm still homeless. Oh, okay. So you're crushing here then. Luckily, it's a three bedroom. <laughs> Good. Is, is, is that what Weird decides to do? Or is Weird going to be uh, like, I don't sure, want to sit down? If the offer is extended, she wouldn't want to presume or anything. Yeah, for sure. I think that was like part of our like initial contact and stuff like that. Okay. Fortunately, about two minutes after the, like, the awkward silence kind of fills in where it's like, well, we don't know what to talk about. Uh, there is a knock at uh, Songbird's door. All right, well, definitely going to go open that. <laughs> no, uh, this is definitely a unexpected uh, visitor uh, in front of you, kind of standing in that little 
little alcove space just outside of the like little elevator mm -hmm. um is a uh is a gentleman he appears um probably 40 50 ish um dressed in jeans and a uh, dark blue button down shirt uh kind of mediterranean ancestry a little bit uh you know uh, deeply tanned skin and his uh his hair is just absolutely gone just shaved very very carefully bald uh very kind of severe expression on his face and uh he kind of looks at you gives songbird a kind of once over and goes songbird i presume that's me very well are the others with you yep just got here oh, very well uh may i commit do you I'm, do don't you say yes he's a vampire that's why he's asking do you actually say that mammon fuck no okay <laughs> uh do you mind telling me who you are Oh, of course. You probably have no idea. Uh, my name is Shodell. I am the Herald of the Concilium. Oh, my apologies. Come on in. Very well. Uh, he kind of walks in, kind of, you know, the, you know, follows Songbird into where all of you are and very quickly has that, that look and gaze of name to face kind of recognition, nodding, okay, everybody is here. He's like, okay, well, since you are all here, my name is Shodell. I am the Herald of the Concilium. I am a he kind of shrugs and he says, I am a bit of a glorified messenger most days. Uh, I greet new mages as they come into the concilium. I uh, establish any uh, long uh, standing cabals uh, such as yourselves. I make sure that you are all feeling welcome and are aware of the bronze laws of the concilium. And for those who may not have read that part of the book, uh, the bronze laws are going to be the specific concilium rules that are for this area so this guy is basically bringing hey these are the local statutes and rules don't break them because these are our rules and uh he does uh start by asking um does um have have you all established a cabal name by chance we've uh, only just met yeah we met like 10 minutes ago hmm and no no flowing creativity already? Oh, very well. Um, and his hand, well, actually, it makes a quick motion with his fingers and then just moves his hand out and draws back and just in the blink of an eye, just draws out literally just a clipboard and he writes down, Puck Building Cabal. Uh, this will do for now. Uh, should you all change your name, please let me know so that I can update our records. So uh, with that, um, I have all of your paths and orders provided by the Hierarch. Um, I believe that uh, you have all been informed of your Cabal's purpose in being formed. Yeah, we're supposed to go out and investigate some mysteries, find some artifacts. Uh, more or less, as I understand it, um, the uh, Mysterium has uh, established a fact-finding group, he says, as he looks at Atratus and Mammon. Uh, meanwhile, the Guardians of the Veil, and he gives uh, Weird a knowledge, knowing look and nod, um, and there's definitely a, like, mm. <laughs> we're, we're on the same page kind of thing. Um, and the Guardians are here to keep things under control. And then I guess you are a bodyguard. Of sorts to put things lightly. Uh, very, very well. Uh, flip, 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 flip. Um, okay. So bronze laws of the New York Concilium. <clears throat> Ahem. The mages of the New York Concilium do swear to inflict no harm upon the vampires in the streets or public places of the city, save in their own self-defense. And he kind of pauses. Any questions about this? Okay. Self-defense, got it. I mean, self-defense is kind of a broad term, but... In the streets. So, inside? There's uh, our game. You, you see Shodell <laughs> smile. He says, uh, yes, we were very explicit uh, when drafting this law. This is um, paired with a law that is put down by the Vampire Prince 
of uh, New York, who has also declared that no vampire may feed from a pentacled mage without their consent. He kind of pauses and, and mentions accidents, however, have happened. So do be on your guard. And yes, uh, Atreides, as you have pointed out, yes, the streets and public places of the city are very, very specifically mentioned, but nothing else. Okay, good to know. Uh, he continues down his little list. Uh, it is an, an individual cabal's responsibility to determine the presence of any and all werewolf packs in the cabal's claimed or assigned territory and to tr and, uh, to treat with them as they see fit. Um, there are numerous packs throughout New York, some large, some small. They very occasionally have overlapping territories, but their territories do not necessarily match up with ours as such. You should investigate what uh, werewolf packs are in your territory, which is for now basically South Manhattan, and determine if uh, there are any werewolf packs that you need to make an agreement with, or at least determine whether or not uh, they are potential adversaries. Sounds good. Very well. And <clears throat> the Guardians of the Veil are prohibited from establishing a labyrinth that may disrupt or compete with the Cryptopolis of the Silver Ladder. There goes my Friday night. Uh, specifically, the Hierarch is of the Silver Ladder, and the Cryptopolis that he has established, as well with his compatriots, are not to offend, uh, not to be affected by our labyrinths, which effectively keeps us from working within the cultural and upper crest elite. We do have a couple labyrinths that we have established throughout New York, but we are to leave the upper echelons of society alone. So say it, the hierarch and most of the counselors. And gives, gives weird a nod and goes, yeah. <laughs> um, then uh, are there any other further questions? How do we go about finding werewolves? Um, well, uh, that, that well, is up to... Help. <laughs> yeah, I was to say, that is up to you to determine. Um, however, um, out of character, um, peripheral um, mage sight will trigger off of the presence of any supernatural. So okay. bump and shoulders against a werewolf. You might not know immediately that they are a werewolf, but combine the fact that they're usually kind of on the big side. Uh, and if it's daylight out, you can cross out vampires entirely. Um, so you, with that... Um, uh, but then Shodell actually says, um, since you do not have a shaman amongst your mitts, um, that is usually the easiest way, since shamans have a good way with spirits, as do werewolves, um, you may consider recruiting a Thyrsus, a shaman, from uh, the rest of the concilium, or get chummy with your neighbors, perhaps? Um, I, d I don't tend to uh, <clears throat> work that side of the uh, street, so to speak. Uh, my work tends to be... It's been a while since you've been on the beat, huh? Yes, thankfully. Uh, but now that you are all here and have been welcomed, my official duties are over, and he immediately sits down and goes, okay, though for real, do you guys have any real questions? <laughs> well, I presume that the Concilium put this cabal together for a specific purpose. Is there something pressing that we should be looking into? Uh, immediately, no. Uh, as I understand it, uh, each of your orders have uh, provided information for all of you. I do not know necessarily what information has been provided or what orders you have received. And weird, I imagine you understand that. Uh, you know, compartmentalize knowledge. Uh, though he does then look to the rest of the uh, cabal to see if anybody else has something to contribute. Yeah, I, I kind of just volunteer that like, I don't really have any sort of info from my uh, from the Adamantine Arrow. Uh, they just told me to kind of keep my eyes open and protect these nerds. <laughs> Shodel looks a little bit mm, about nerds, but... Hey, my word. Yep. When should we uh, expect orders? Uh, if you have not received orders already, then um, I do not know. Um, 
perhaps, you know, investigate your local area, establish yourselves, perhaps establish a sanctum here. Um, his, he kind of reaches his hands out. It's on the know, list, man. Yeah. It's on the he list. Kind of, kind of feels there's nothing, you know, there's no, nothing established here. So, so uh, I'm going to step to the, the meta side here and be like, I know Atratus and Memon both have gotten orders. They're not detailed. Yeah. We need to go to the Museum of the American Indian. That's... That seems pretty detailed. <laughs> At least initial details. They'll tell me yeah. what I'm looking for or what we're doing. Detailed. Yeah. They're saying go here, so... Uh, but that, that said, uh, when when you mentioned that, Trudeau goes, ah, that would be the local Athenaeum. Uh, that is one of your Mysterium's uh, holdings. They're set up in a museum. Dope. I mean, where Where better to be? (laughs) Exactly. Fair, fair. Uh, So Shodel says, okay, well, very well. Uh, If you all have some, uh, well, you clearly have some talking uh, amongst yourselves to do, uh, and then at least have a a start, I guess the Mysterium will be providing some work immediately, or perhaps. So with that, uh, unless anybody else has any concerns or questions specifically about rules of the Concilium or the immediate uh, neighborhood, then I will make my uh, make my leave. I think that's it. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and so he kind of rises himself and says, no, no need to walk me out and just, boom, and he's just gone. <laughs> Mastigo. This is nice of him to they can walk. teleport. Nice of him yeah. to knock the first time, huh? Yeah. Yes, Mastigos can definitely teleport. It's much easier to go from where you're at to another place that you are familiar with uh, versus the reverse. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I noticed uh, it was very wise to say knocked the first time because I feel like he won't every time. Uh, it depends. Uh, just kind of you know meta knowledge kind of thing. Uh, you have to have a sympathetic bond to where you're going. So if you have an item and you know Shodel didn't pick something up and he didn't like, you know, eh, and mark the wall. Um, so he doesn't necessarily have a sympathetic link back here. He mm. could forge one with some some serious space magic, but it's sometimes easier just to walk by and knock right. or call. Uh, so yes, uh, you it's guys do... Polite. It is, it is, a, there is a politeness thing, uh, especially since you guys have declared this is your sanctum. So busting in on, on you guys kind of um, without warning is kind of rude. So uh, I catch my pants up. Right, exactly. Because uh, uh, the gravity. Nice. Uh, so that said, uh, is there anything you guys want to discuss now that you guys are here? You have a better idea of, a little bit better idea of what's going on? Well, Songbird, this is your neighborhood. Seems yeah. the first thing we should probably try. If there's any werewolf packs, do you have any information on that? Nothing that I know of. I haven't been really, really keeping my eyes out for those sorts of things. Uh, you know, got some non magey stuff I'm dealing with. So, so we're gonna pause right there since you guys are, you know, kind of like, hmm, what's going on? Um, and because let's get some die rolls in here for crying out loud. Um, let's yeah. roll, let's roll perception. If y'all don't mind, this is uh composure plus, um, uh, Wits. Composure plus, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wits plus composure. That's why it sounded wrong when I said composure first. Yeah. So Wits plus composure is your standard perception. Uh, that's just kind of paying attention. I believe some people, maybe two people have trained observers. So this would apply because this is a perception roll. Is this like so it's a in general, like while we were in the neighborhood, or is this like this is hey, let's go get some food and this is literally while you guys are sitting here on the couches on your okay gray room. And uh, what is my uh, trained perception? Trained uh, gets you nine. That's right, nine again. Nine that's again. right. Mm-hmm. How do I uh, format the nine again in there? That's not uh, what I tried to do. <laughs> in the top, in the top right corner, uh, there's a little box for nine again. I have composed your wit selected. Why did it shoot yeah. gun? Uh, sheet roll. Uh, yeah, you'll do sheet roll. Uh, yeah, double check your. Oh, okay, set. it was set to attack. All right. Wow, we got two sets of three successes. Mm. Yes. And then a two success. And then, and then somebody tried to shoot somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and on four Jesus. successes. 
So perceptive. Uh, though only, uh, well, we'll actually go off Mammon's because he's the most perceptive. So Mammon, while they're kind of, you know, uh, weird and songbird are starting to talk about, uh, you know, hey, have you seen werewolves around? Just kind of out of the corner of your eye, you notice storm clouds out over the bay starting to roll in. And I mean, storm clouds, like, holy mess, this is going to be a big, nasty one. Definitely was not on the weather forecast and definitely was not what you guys were seeing literally 20 minutes ago when you were arriving here. All right. Call it maybe not even two minutes later. The clouds have moved from the bay to at the building, rolling over it. And suddenly the streets outside are no longer visible. Uh, there is just absolute torrential rain pouring down. Uh, where's my notes here? Um, All right, guys. Who is summoning Zool? And then I point out the window. Uh, yeah. Uh, at this I'm point, the, uh, activating mage site. Uh, which mage site? Um, fate and time work together automatically. So you can, yeah. If you decide, you can activate both of them at the same time. Yes. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, cool. Um, nothing immediately hits you as like this is magical, like about the storm or the rain or anything like that. But there is this probably actually kind of tied probably to both of them that this storm is not supposed to be here. This is it's out of its time. It wasn't faded. It wasn't supposed to be here kind of thing. It definitely has this. Hmm, that's not quite right. Yeah. But yeah, as you guys are watching. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to put a song be like you do storms, right? Uh, I mean, sorry. Yeah, I actually don't know where the mage What's site. What's Prime oh. Mage site do? I don't know. Uh, Prime Mage site, I think, is actually almost perfect for this. Yeah, scenario. So I'm thinking you can you where can is, tell us where something. Is that? Uh, uh, under Mage, uh, I just search Mage site. Yeah, there's uh, Chapter Three Mage site, uh, specifically page okay, cool. ninety-one. Uh, but yes. Um, Mage Shite highlights things that can be used as Yantra, presence of, not composition of any awakened spell or attainments. Uh, they can recognize tasks with a glance and tell if they are in a hallow or no. Um, now, forces would detect motion, highlight presence of environmental tilts, fire, electricity, other hazards. With a glance, you can tell if the device is powered. Hmm. Um, okay. Now, that is like the immediately like, hey, this is what it does. Right. Uh, but, you know, you are using this lens to view stuff. So in this case, just kind of taking control of your character for a second. You have to be forces uh, sight and go, yeah, this is not an awakened spell, but something is definitely messing with the weather. Okay. And notably, you can definitely tell uh, with prime mage sight, this is definitely not an awakened spell. Mm. Uh, in the, you know, say two minutes that it takes you guys to have this discussion, the storm has rolled over the surrounding, you know, out the windows, it is mist. If you guys go to the windows and look down, you cannot see the streets, though you can see headlights of cars mm -hmm. creeping along very, very slowly as this just becomes absolutely abysmal, torrential, somebody called Noah, we need an arc kind of storm. Mm. Um, the thunder and lightning is real. The windows rattle. Uh, this is one of those, oh, yeah, no, we're just staying in kind of storms. My question to you guys, you are mages. Do you go out into the storm? Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, something's up. I want to see. I mean, I'll reluctantly follow, but I just bought this suit and it was kind of expensive. <laughs> I'm trying to think but of you it. You have money. Yeah, that's true. You do have, you are made <laughs> listen, of money. Listen, rich people stay rich because they don't blow money on bullshit. Like a suit? Like, yeah. <laughs> listen, it's. <laughs> Very important that I have this too. <laughs> uh, real quick question. Um, what do you guys take out? Uh, like, I know, uh, Atratus, you have like your bag of tools. Mm -hmm. um, but what are you guys heading out with? Like, just the full kit, like you're ready for anything? Or are you guys trying to be a little bit more casual and just like rain jacket, hoodies, umbrellas? Well, I, I wear like a heavy, like a long coat all the time anyway with a hood. So I'll just put the hood up. I, my backpack, everything I own is in there. Okay. So I'm kind of always loaded for bear as far as that goes. Got a very fashionable me uh, messenger bag. 
Uh, question. Yeah, that's what just is, what I'm carrying. So, what is the parking situation for this building? Is it like um, underground parking situation? Yeah. We can get so by an elevator. The there's almost like, except for like skyscrapers and stuff. There's just not underground parking. So, so, yeah. so you're is probably parked on the street. Parking? I'm just trying to decide if I have to walk through the rain to get to my car where the umbrella is. Uh, you, can borrow, you can borrow mine. <laughs> yeah, so, Songbird has like a couple. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so you guys head out into this rainstorm. You're kind of pushing past tons and tons of people who are like any place, especially the lower floors of the Puck building are not actually houses or anything like that. If I remember correctly, they have... I'm trying to remember what's in there. I was looking it up, but for the case of Chronicles of Darkness, it's uh, a museum. No, it's not a museum. I can't do that. Uh, uh, some stuff. So, yeah. Real quick. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Out of curiosity, uh, Mammon is going to um, check the weather app and see what the weather is supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. Quick little look. And no, it's supposed to be sunshiny all weekend. I um yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna show show the class um that this is definitely some fucky weather. <laughs> okay, okay, I, think, I think we get it that. <laughs> Just making sure the confirmation. Here's, your, here's yeah. your umbrella. Yeah. Okay, so before you guys just march out into the storm, especially because there are sleepers out there, um, do you guys try like? What what is your plan here? Are we gonna just walk out into the storm and let our feet take us where we think they're gonna go? Yes, weird. I know that's probably your plan, but I'm gonna see if anybody. Well, actually, weird uh, does actually I think have a spell that might apply, but um, I'm not 100 percent sure that applies in this situation. Anybody else thoughts on how to pinpoint where you you are headed? Are you gonna you know wander a little bit? Well, I was gonna ask. Um... You know, does it, is it, I guess my question is how, how big is the, the, the cloud, the grouping of clouds? Is it, can we in tell your, that it's like centered over something? When you flip through your app, um, you notice that the, um, the storm literally like it's over all of New York, over Manhattan. It just sweeps over all of it uh, and does not seem it's centered on anyone. Yeah. It does not seem centered on like one point or avoiding one point. I think maybe we should still try to go to the museum. Oh, Unless anyone think. has any ideas on how to figure out what's doing this. No, uh, I think the museum, it's really the only lead we have at this point. I think we're going up at the to try to cast a spell before we go. Okay. What do you, what do you got in mind? Sacred geometry lets me mm -hmm. take a gander at like the ley lines and everything. Oh, um, okay. And see if it's like following or drawn to a thing specific. Okay, cool. Uh, what uh, what spell? It's prime, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. what's prime one? Prime one. Okay, so yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and roll that. Uh, so for you, that's going to be your gnosis plus prime. Do you have it as a root or a? I don't. Okay, cool. Uh, so are there any yantras that you apply to this? Any. Um... And this is our first time, you know, casting casting spells here. So feel free to ask questions. Walk, you know, we can walk through this. Um, yeah, so I only right? like one yantra, right? Uh, you can do one yantra reflexively, uh, okay. but at your gnosis, uh, you're at gnosis two, right? Mm -hmm. One. Okay, so yeah, you can only use two yantras total when you cast instantly. I imagine you're not going to ask everybody to wait for three hours while no. you cast. <laughs> not at all. Okay. Um, Okay, so I guess I would use my like path tool mm -hmm. and high speech. Okay, cool. So that'll give you plus three. Uh, okay. Now, what is this path tool? Because it the path tool has to apply to the spell, right? So you are trying to open yourself up and see things. So probably a mirror. Okay, yeah. Sure, I like it. Literally, you could walk into. Okay, hang on, guys. I gotta walk into the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah. this is, like the spell is like it's a buff on me. Mm -hmm. It like changes my ability to yeah. Okay. Yep. Right, uh, cool. So basically, what you'll roll is your gnosis plus mm -hmm. prime mm -hmm. plus three. plus three. 
Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> Nothing. Um, now that is a failure, uh, which does mean uh, I don't think anything necessarily bad happens. It's only dramatic failures that cause something bad to happen. But there it is. There we go. Uh, failure. Yep. Magic does not work. The mage's imagination is not made real. Yeah, you just you're you're still new to this, and this just nah wasn't there. Uh, yeah. Quite all right. Nothing. Nothing comes together. I wash my hands and leave the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened, guys. I did screw up. No, we're good. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, so I got so, a couple of ideas to try. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure what you had in mind. I was thinking inter- interconnections. I mean, there, there's all sorts. You know, I, I've said it once. I'll say it again. Multiple ways to skin this cat. Interconnections. Yeah. Is that time? Yeah. Reveals the marks of fate on people and places. Places, things the mage observes. Between subjects, can also identify bodily the presence of spells with conditional stuff. May detect. Da, 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 da. Sure, you can definitely try it. Sure. Um, so, so that's just fate and gnosis, right? Mm-hmm. And then it is going to be withstood by composure. You're not casting it on a particular person, so it's not being opposed or withstood by that. Just the you're because you're casting it on the storm effectively or the area. So yeah. Um, now that said, um, you are going to have negatives because you're trying to. Well, no, I guess hmm. it's a thing I can see. Yes, but the problem is it's the subject. The subject is the storm. Right. Um, and that is a really big storm. Um, so to cast at that scale is kind of huge. Um, like minus 10 penalty huge. Um, actually, no, because all you're really trying to do is you could even do that like the storm right here. You don't need the whole storm. Just, yeah, yeah we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So same get, kind of thing. Because I'm I'm uh, fate three and it's a level one spell, I get two um two reaches for three. Oh three, right, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Two eight reach. Yep. So I can uh, expand the area. Yeah, with advanced scale. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, normal sheet roll. One success. There you go. Yeah. Well that's without any yantras. That was you literally going, I cast the spell. <laughs> yep. Uh, no high speech or anything. Uh, so yes, the spell takes shape. Um, and let me go back to reading it. Uh, fate. Interconnections. Um, so looking about um, allowing you to any sympathetic connections between the subjects. You can also identify those who violated it. So yeah, looking around, the, the storm itself is absolutely immense. Um, and you're just kind of perceiving and looking about and at first, you don't really see anything. Uh, there's thunder and lightning out throughout it. But there's this one, like, silver thread that just from somewhere up, which you, you just know is the absolute minimum of the storm. And it's just drawing down to some place uh, northwest. Wait, hang on. Yeah, almost due north. I remember that Manhattan is tilted. Uh, basically, almost due north from you guys. Maybe a little off northwest. And not very far. Uh, it's not like in North Manhattan. It's somewhere down here in, what, lower Manhattan, I think is the correct term? Okay, yeah. I, I try to say, I know, and I'm still looking up at the storm. I know you really want to go to the museum, but the storm isn't natural. Um, and I can see where the lines are. It's north of us. If we, I, I want to find out what's going on with this storm. This isn't natural. It's not supposed to be here. Yeah. Question. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably reading this spell incorrectly, but um, correspondence allows me to see the link mm-hmm. um, between people or objects. Would it be possible for me to effectively cast correspondence on the storm clouds? and see potentially what link it has to a cause? Yes, actually, that is almost the exact thing that um, uh, that Weird had done, but Weird does it basically for, uh, it allows to see connections based on fate. You could literally see 
any kind of connection. So yeah, you could actually draw this the the almost the same link. And I think um, I'm trying to remember because that's a that's a space one, I think. Uh, yeah, space one correspondence. Um, learns the right, but for this one, and the the trick is you actually know what the link is. In the case of Weird Spell, she can see this link, but she doesn't necessarily know what it is. You could actually kind of translate and tell what that link is. Right. So, so I would yeah. roll um, Gnosis in space. Gnosis right. in space. Uh, and then if you use high speech, that's another two. Um, and then if you want to put some willpower into it, uh, so you don't have a failure uh, in the bathroom. <laughs> the way it's oh, I forgot I could do that. Yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned that. I, uh, I will use high speech, and I will consume a willpower. Okay. How do I tell this macro that I am doing those things? Uh, once you click, it'll ask you what die bonuses you want. And then the willpower just adds an extra dice, correct? Uh, willpower is three dice, three and dice. then high speech is two, so you have a total bonus of five on top of your gnosis plus space. Holy mess! Four. So Thank close you. to critical. Yeah, well, all you need is one, but five would have been a critical success. So you rolled a natural 19 to give you an idea. <laughs> so close. Uh, so let's see, we are to above, above for each level of potency. Runs one of its sympathetic links starting with its oldest and strongest links first. Okay, so uh, what is your space dots? Three, right? Two. Two. Okay. Mine so, is two. Right, so you have basically two potency that you can do for free. So we'll just say you've used that. Um, your the oldest link it has is to the ocean, which is where it came right, which is where it came from. But then it has this much newer link that transitions down into um, into New York. You don't have a, a face, but you know what the connection itself is to your mind. You know that the connection is to Stormcaller. You don't know if that's a name. You don't know if that's a title. You just know it's called to the Stormcaller or the with a capital T. Capital T, capital S. Okay, give me give me a second. Sure. Because I think I have something for that. Okay. Can we share what this was on Locate object as long as I know that the object exists and it is within a radius of me, I can know exactly where it is at. Mm -hmm. Unless it is being concealed by magic and then it provokes a clash of wills. Right. Um, so yes, you can definitely do that. It has to be within the area of the spell, so that means you will have to like it will have to be a big range. Um, so that will have some negatives to it, but you can definitely possibly overcome them. Are you, sir, implying that Manhattan is a large place? Yep. Okay. And we also have a general area we know where it is. All of this thread, right? Yeah. You could head, yeah. Well, you the because the scale was not advanced out too long. Uh, well, actually, you did have a bunch of free reach. Did you cast that at the advanced duration? We'll say, so you have um, have it for an hour. That's for sure in a wider area. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, that would have been. Yeah, that would have been your three. Yeah. So you've got it for about an hour. So once you're closer, that's when um, you could definitely call up, use Stormcaller, and locate locate object, which I'm actually curious. It says locate object, but does it actually say anything about it actually being an object? Um, as long as the subject of the spell. As long as the subject. It doesn't specifically say person. Well, um, and it doesn't, even when it says short of concealing magic, it still doesn't, doesn't determine, uh, it doesn't say specifically whether it is a person or right. has to be an object. So yeah. I am interpreting it as no, whatever the fucking object. Yeah, whether that's a person, place, or thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, between now, yeah, you guys will probably need to find some place. Well, I actually wouldn't even necessarily need to find a private place as long as, um, uh, Mammoth isn't being too obvious with the spell casting. So yeah, I can just cast it in my car and stay dry at the same time. <laughs> you could. Um, is that what? Uh, do you guys all pile into? Do you have enough space in your car? I uh, know. Is it is one hundred percent a coupe. Uh, somebody's <laughs> gonna have to take the wrong car. Who has a car? Songbird. Songbird one hundred percent has a car. I. I'm already don't. running. Just running? Like I'm splashing through the street, holding my hat. 
Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of into the water walk too. <laughs> I'm gonna get in the car. Okay, <laughs> so, which, I, I love this because, fun. because well, half of your party has died of pneumonia. <laughs> right, we got we got Mammon and and Atrata sitting in the car, just cruising Not along moving. very 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 slowly um, through the storm. But just like yeah. walking by. Right. Yeah, like right, we'll we'll catch up with them. Uh, and uh yeah especially since you do have a, a bit of a, a time con- uh condition here so um hmm how do how to resolve um well yeah uh songbird and weird probably gain a little bit of distance enough that unfortunately you will disappear into this mist because like i said pouring rain um but you know and weird you're probably doing this like yep. bouncing around you know trying to or, or like, silver... every now and then just like reaching and like Pushing her out of the way of like someone she's about to walk into. <laughs> yeah, just just guard, just guard. <laughs> Pulling you back from cars and the curb edge yeah. and stuff like right. that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, focused. You haven't been in the city long, have you? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you know, uh, Mammon and Atratus will try to catch up uh, as as they can. Um, and so um, yeah, so Weird and Songbird, you guys are like hauling butt uh, and. Uh, it actually gets a little bit easier for Weird because eventually the storm seems to apparently settle and the mm-hmm. center of the storm is just hovering and there's just this silver line that you can see that comes down. Oh shit, down. I've seen this movie. They're going to break the <laughs> uh, And uh, it's, uh, it's on the northwest side of lower Manhattan um, and it just kind of comes to stop and probably about the time that the spell is running out you make sight of whatever this building is Mm -hmm. and it's um it's a large building um it looks like a convention center um and this beam this little silver line you know that has not changed in thickness it's just been that same resolution this entire time and it's just sitting right there and then suddenly it just winks up as weird feels the spell kind of like fade and so you can see, okay, there's the building. Okay, so now I look around and find out where I am. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, and which is terrific, because I actually set up, uh, I, I found out you can set up your own map in Google. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. And so I know exactly where this place is, and I can actually figure out, hmm, vaguely you are. So is it more like yeah. Chelsea or West Village? Uh, yes. Hold, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have pulled this map up earlier. Where is my map? While you do that, you did say that um, the link was going to be active. The spell was going to last for what a couple hours. Uh, his spell? Excuse me, her spell? Yes. Her, uh, her spell lasted uh, one scene or an hour. Okay, so that means that they've been walking for an hour. Mm-hmm. Is it reasonable to find out if I have caught up with them yet? Uh, I imagine even if you haven't caught up with them, you at least had the wherewithal to call them. Well, I would imagine so, but I'm just making sure that I'm with them because otherwise locate object is going to be worthless because I don't know where I'm, if I'm within it. Right. Uh, so let's see here. I mean, Direction. you're trying to drive during a storm during like afternoon traffic on a Friday. Yep. So let's see here. Driving. It takes. Give me these directions. No, let me see these directions. Dang it! I was so I'm, happy. Yeah, I'm trying I was, through the city. It's traffic's not that bad. Yeah. So well, with the storm. Uh, yeah, you definitely were. Uh, like because it's a 19 minute drive with current traffic. Uh, <laughs> plus the storm. So. Uh, but walk. I love this. This is so great. Like I can't do this in D and D, man. <laughs> I just just click the button and be like, oh yeah, this is about how long it takes. <laughs> uh, step by step directions. Yeah, actually, right on. One hour, two minutes. Um, to so walk. yeah, to walk. Yeah. Uh, so so like I said, uh, you are in. Uh, well, actually, uh, the garment district. Hang on, let me zoom out a little bit. You're nearing Hell's Kitchen. Oh, okay. I love this map. This is the best. I just have. I just need to have a DM moment where, like, guys, if you're playing D and D right now, just stop. Go to World of Darkness. You can use Google Maps. It makes everything easier. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, 
Let's see here. Um, yeah, looking around, um, uh, there's some theaters that you recognize nearby. Uh, you passed a, you passed, well, actually, neither of you would care, but you passed the Museum of Contemporary Art. So you don't you're really right. care. Yeah. yeah, well, that's true. That's true. They might. They're not Mysterium, though. They don't care. Uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of where you guys are at. And you can give Mammoth and uh, Tratus a quick call and be like, uh, yeah, this is where we're at. Come find us. The storm, however, is still absolutely torrential downpour. It has, like, it's still going. Okay. Um, and Atratus and Mammon, you guys, you know, take maybe another minute to, you know, catch up with them, uh, just because let's keep this thing going, right? Uh, yeah. And I you think, guys... I think, like, they're catching up with us, right? So mm -hmm. once we get there, I think uh, I, I want to get inside because, you know, if we're in the fucking rain. You sure. guys are gonna so yeah. Uh, that was the choice, sir. <laughs> well, you know, again, you chose to buy a two seater car, sir. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, just say need to need to upgrade. Get the the get the minivan. That's so I think like as I'm like walking in, like you said, this is like convention center, right? It is a convention center, and it is closed up. Lights are off. Oh, okay. Are there any like uh like big signs or posters or anything? Is like is there an event going on? There's not an event going on. Okay. It just looks like it is like closed down. Nobody's here, not in use kind of kind of situation. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in here. No crews or people or anything we can see. Nope. Hmm. Oh. Locked doors. Locked doors. Oh, that's easy enough. <laughs> I was gonna say there. There's a literal thief in the party. Well, like, I don't even have to wait for that. Like, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think you have the skills too. Are you going to yeah, give me the lock? That's not even a skill thing. Like it's like one of them's going to be unlocked, so I'll just start trying doors. Uh, no, you go through, and your luck is not. Oh, quite no, you're not. One of them has got to be unlocked. I'm going to be using fate to make sure. Okay, one of them is. Okay. Uh, do you have a specific spell in mind, sir? Uh, no. Well, I guess one could. There's one that can work. Hang on. Uh, where's my praxis? Yeah, so say. I have an idea for what's for inside too. For a web of life, it lets you specify what you're looking for. Can I look for um supernatural beings? Uh potentially. What's the spell? Or are uh, they dots? One dot. Okay. One dot. Like tapping into the pulse. Living world. She might be able to uh, how are these doors? I'm oh, sorry. It's, uh, connections connects all life. Because the unfiltered. Those specify such as humans, insects, or birds, or only dogs. So, uh, detect all specified within the scale or enter the policy in effect. Uh, so, yeah, it, werewolves would be a appropriate uh, target. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's, um, I mean, I wanted to look for anything that wasn't human. Okay, we can do that. Uh, go yeah. ahead and roll shifting the odds. Um, now, if you're casting it as a rote, that does mean there's going to be some kind of stuff that might be overtly magical. So that might be something that uh, you need to deal with. Yeah. So look around, make sure nobody's paying attention. I mean, it's raining in New York City, heavy rain. People are going to have their heads down. Okay. Does it look okay? Nobody's like paying close attention to us or anything? Nobody's staring you down, but you guys are standing still in the rain next to these doors. All right. Um, I'm going to give it a try. Okay. And so, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. What what yantras are you using? Obviously, the rote skill. Um, yep. Um, and uh, I'll pull a tarot card. Okay. Just sheer chance. Okay. For for fate. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, and it's based on subterfuge, which is one of my um, path path skills, path mm -hmm. skills, order skills. Mm -hmm. Do I get that? Does that mean it's a nine again, or is it a? No, you just get an additional on top of whatever your skill would normally be. Okay. So if you had four, it would be five. If you had five, it would be six. All right. And I will get a macro made that makes this a little bit easier. Hopefully it'll be like prompts for each thing. What's your gnosis? What's your arcana? So let, okay, let me make sure I got this straight. So I've got one for tool use and two for high speech. No, because because uh, your rope is one of them. Okay, the, right. The rope okay. skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So you'd be uh, using Roten your uh, high speech if you want to do it that way. No, it'd be tool and tool and rote. So that okay. gives me plus plus three. Is that correct? Uh, what's your subterfuge? 
my subterfuge. Well, it's calculating subterfuge already, but subterfuge. Oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, so in that case, um, oh, uh, plus one for your mm -hmm. plus one for the tool. Mm -hmm. Plus one for the well, tool. one for the tool. Okay, um, and then because it's a path skill, I get an extra plus one, so plus two, right? Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Three successes. Nice. Yeah, and then scatter your subterfuge. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so um, let's see here. We'll read that spell out exactly. But yeah, no, it'll it'll definitely work. Uh, I'm looking for an open door, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, superlative luck? Or shifting the odds? Shifting the odds. Shifting the odds. Yeah, I was just like, wait a second, that's not right. Okay, yeah, so uh, always has access on what you need. Uh, the spell directs her steps to it in unerringly as soon as possible within the next 24 hours, as long as the spell remains active which we should have talked about, but reach for instant, reach for advanced duration. Right. Um, um, and it also says that if I'm in an area where something is likely to be found, it's essentially instant. Very, yeah. And yeah, you de definitely find, and it's not unlocked. It's really clearly, it was locked, but you tug on that door. That's that's the right door. You grab it and you jiggle, jiggle, and it's like, wait, hang on. And like that lock is just, it's it's busted. Uh, okay. And so, yeah, you just kind of jimmy that open and very quickly go, okay, guys, inside. So, yes, uh, weird kind of has a moment where she casts a spell uh, and then walks over and just opens the door. Uh, everybody piling in? For sure. I guess so. Mammon, did you find a parking spot? <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting to cast my locate object. Cool. Oh, yeah, we're running inside now. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, once you guys get inside, um, yeah, it, you have this big open, well, there's a first like entrance area where, you know, crowds are probably filtered. There's another set of doors beyond that probably lead into a big uh, convention hall. Uh, you got some like bathrooms off to the side and then, uh, you know, kind of your office -y type buildings uh, to the sides. Um, so, yeah, who, do, who does what first? I am going to cast Locate Object on the Source of the Storm. It okay. is going to be Space 2 and Gnosis 1. I am using High Speech to get a plus 2. I will not be using Will. Okay. Fire away. Nice. Three successes. Nice. And you have Space 2. So we'll have to go over Reach later, because uh, that's one Reach for Instant and Okay, so you have a decision to make now, sir, because I should have talked about this before casting it. Uh, I hadn't realized it. You having space two throws me off uh, all my mental calculations. Uh, wait, what? Is it a locate object? Is two dots? One dot? One dot. Oh, okay. That's it. That, right next to ground eater. Yep. Okay, so um, that means that you have two, two reach. One, for, one for instantly <laughs> casting. Okay, so yeah, you have... You have an issue here uh, because you want to have a bit of duration and you want to have a bit of scale to actually reach everything. So for the sake of the game, we'll keep moving. If you also use your dedicated magical tool, which you could because you only use high speech, dedicated magical tool reduces your paradox tool by two uh, and you that would give you your room to do some extra reach to get the advanced scale of uh, advanced scale and advanced duration. So it lasts for an hour and it's now the base advanced scale, I believe. I need to make these silly things for me alone, uh, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah, advanced scale base level is a large house or building, like, you know, a convention center. Well, technically the next one up is a small warehouse, but we won't, we're not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, what is it? What is the base area for the spell? It doesn't actually say in the description. All it's spells? Just, uh, area. Right. All spells, their base area is either one person or arm's reach. Well, so you that's have to, useless. Yeah. Well, no, you just throw, uh, you could actually do like a minus two and that adds size and stuff like that. We'll talk about that uh, in the future uh, when we're a little bit more. Um, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I but will. No, the, attempt to locate a closet or a bathroom where I can throw my mask on without no. looking like a madman. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, we, Yeah, you guys have already seen him put the mask on. Yeah, which, by the way... Uh, cool, man. Yeah, I was going to say, which, by the way, uh, which actually, what does it look like again? I'm trying to remember. I get that note somewhere here. 
It's um, it's kind of like Roger? a uh, it's like a Jolly Roger with gold teeth and uh, copper coins slightly above where the eyes are to look like eyes, but I can see underneath. <laughs> Nobody wants to be blind. blind. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you come out and and what was the object? The storm caller, right? That's what you were looking storm for. Storm caller. Okay. Cool. And then Ash, uh, if you want to cast uh, Web of Life, that way, if you do find non-humans, yeah, um, I wanted to keep it. Uh, have us be ready. Sure. Um, so let's see here. Web of Life. Minimize all these sidebars so I can. Yeah, that's just going to be one gnosis, one life. Okay. Um, and then you only have one reach. So, especially since you only have one gnosis and one life, um, well, I actually take this opportunity uh, to mm -hmm. talk about putting negatives on this uh, because you're going to want um, one reach to cast it instantly and then probably. Uh, I need range range and duration otherwise it's the scale is uh the duration is literally one turn which you can I mean, do I, hear, I care less about duration i just need to know if there's something else in this building okay so you just is... do this one big instant pain yeah mm -hmm. okay just that's to cool. see if anything lights up okay so yeah so for that that'll be uh so yeah again if you use your dedic Ooh, what's your gnosis just two one. right okay it's cool. one uh yeah i'm the one who keeps giving you two doses and it's still wrong on the it. sheet. It's still wrong on the sheet. Oh my yeah. god. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. We're totally professional. We we know what we're doing here. <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah, in that case, uh, yeah. So using your dedicated magical tool will take care of the extra paradox. It reduces it to a chance die. So for the hell of it, uh, you would contain the paradox. I'm sure, right? Yeah. Okay. So if this rolls a ten, it invokes paradox. It doesn't. Okay. Okay. Uh, cool. So yeah. So you do this big ping. And nothing. It's happens. gonna be just roll gnosis and life. Oh yes, I shouldn't give you the results. <laughs> yeah. Um, no modifiers, right? Um, well, you could at least use high speed, so you can give yourself yeah. a plus two. And then, that. if you want to add willpower, that would be another three. No, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, one success. It works. One. Yeah. Warm and and I was the, zeroing in on um non-human or yeah. let's say supernatural creatures that way yeah. you don't get pinged by every cockroach uh okay so yeah no it, it and there's nothing now hang on here it's stuff that is currently here right mm -hmm. yeah okay, okay. It'll yes. be things in the area right nothing okay so john excuse me mammon um storm color does not pick up anything as well whatever was the source of this storm is no longer here. Or whoever. Doesn't uh, the um Songbird the cast is. perception? <laughs> and like go looks ahead. around a little bit like a real ass human. Sure. With some composure, go ahead. Uh, what were you saying, Bayman? Doesn't um um sorry, I'm still trying to get used to everybody's super, super cool mage names. <laughs> um, weird casts uh what what's that what's that shit you cast with the with a thread the silver thread mm -hmm. wouldn't it follow the target as it moved because it's the thread is connecting them that is a so really if they moved if, if they moved out of the convention center wouldn't we see the thread move you would have if you guys were following the same thread what do you mean if we were following the same thread? Uh. I can't give you that information, sir. <laughs> Much as I want to. Okay. All right, fair enough. Okay, yeah. well, that answers my... What I... I was I was just confused. Yeah, so. no, I, I understand. I was I was about to let something... I was like, dude, it's a mystery game. Shut up. So I had to I, I have to stop myself. Yeah, I can't... I was it. just trying to make sure I was understanding how this no, felt. No, you were. Yeah, and um, this is 100% a good point where you go, wait, hang on. You were, What thread were you following? And Weird goes... It yeah, was a thread. Well, that, it was, it was something that connected here. So, so I um I'm going to uh, having having thusly removed my mask so mm -hmm. I don't again look like a madman. <laughs> sure. Um I walk over to uh Weird and um I'm kind of rubbing my beard in thought a little bit and I uh I ask um what uh what thread were you following? Um because 
Stormcaller is not in this building, but I wonder, I wonder if Stormcaller made a sympathetic bond with an object here with the storm cloud to either lead us here to show us something or throw us off their trail. Either way. Yep. Definitely possible. But if everyone else is done, I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to take everybody's time, but I could try that again and see if the thread's still here. You could do that. Um, and real quick, uh, Songbird, uh, yeah, you're looking around and going, like, is this place empty? And especially with two successes, um, the convention hall is not empty. That that room beyond you guys, there there are sounds coming from there. Huh. You're not the only what people in here. Sort of sounds. Um footsteps, uh, a little bit of some objects moving, nothing like uh, heavy machinery or anything like that, but there's several people. Cool. Real quick question. How how exactly does mana work with casting spells? I've noticed that uh, it doesn't seem like anybody's used any mana when casting. You we use mana? To... Oh, actually, shoot. I, Web of Life, Ash, does that, oh. is, is that one of your roots or praxies? No, does it take okay. a mana then? It, yeah, because it's not from your ruling arcana, so that will cost one mana. Okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to snitch. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all right. Um, because the mana is basically used if it's not your ruling arcana, your top two, it costs mana to cast. If it's not a rote or praxis, so that's one of those mm -hmm. perks to those. And then sometimes spells will cost mana. Uh, and then you can also use mana to reduce paradox. So, yeah. So, no, no. Uh, good call. Um, and it's just one mana. It's not the end of the world. Hang on, we're good. Yeah. I think we are now caught right. up. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Songbird, go ahead. All right, can I like, take a peek? Is there like a... Yeah, like you said, there's multiple like double doors and stuff like that. Um, how uh, how sneaky are you being? Are you just being brazen MMA fighter? I can handle whatever, whatever's beyond that door. I mean, did you have to ask? <laughs> I, I did. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm going to just kind of open the door. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you open the door. Uh, just you know, not not like you're like kicking it open or something no. like that, but just like pushing it open and over. Excuse me. Over to one corner is the convention center. Uh, the, this huge hall. There's one overhead light on near um, what looks like a uh, service elevator um, that probably goes up to the second floor and possibly the roof. Um, mm -hmm. One light on, and there are a number of men and women, we'll say four of them, uh, all wearing matching um, blue shirts and like um, jean, you know, work trouser type stuff. Not not like they're, you know, dressed up or anything like that. Uh, and they've got duffel bags, and uh, one of them has like an aluminum suitcase, and it looks like they're putting stuff away. God, they're robbing a bank. 